Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. I was just about to leave the bunker and I took a look at an email that one of our community members sent me with this article right here that I'm going to share with you. And I just want to warn you that this is how it starts. Whenever I read an article or share an article with you all talking about something that's going on in another country, many people are like, well, that's not happening here. Why are you covering what's happening in other countries? That's where it starts, ladies and gentlemen. That's where these governments and central banks and elites, people that want to rule the world, literally, they literally want to rule the world. That's where they go ahead and do their pilot programs and see how the public reacts. And then they try to push it along further to maybe more populated countries. And this is the road to a CBDC. This is the road to a central digital currency or central bank digital currency, CBDC. And that's where they want us. And why is that in case any of you are not informed? Because that gives them full control. Imagine if the government had 100% control over what you could spend money on, when you can spend it, where you can spend it, how much of it you can spend. Imagine if they had all that control. Have you ever heard about a YouTube channel being demonetized, meaning that they take away their ability to earn revenue from YouTube? It's the same thing, but in real life. Once we enter into a CBDC, the government will be able to demonetize your life with the push of one button. And talking about that, let me go ahead and say really quick that MD Creekmore, uh, for those of you that know who MD Creekmore is, probably by now you're wondering why he hasn't posted any videos in the last couple of days. And it's because he has been given a strike and he is in what I like to call YouTube jail. So he'll probably be back in about five days, I believe, unless they review his video and bring him back on the air because he did ask for a manual review uh, for the strike that he received. So, and if you don't know MD Creekmore, go check him out. I'll go ahead and leave a link on the top right hand corner of this video right here. You can click on that and go check out his channel. He's a really good guy and he's been doing this for a while. Uh, but anyways, go check him out and see what you think. And if you want to support him, subscribe. If you already subscribed to him, go ahead and support him by taking a look at some of his previous videos. That's how you can beat the YouTube algorithm. Governments restrict ATM withdrawals to $45 per day in bid to force digital currencies. And these are the tactics that they will continue to use. Just like remember the last couple of years with this health crisis that we were going through, they were trying to do a lot of things to get people to do something that they didn't want to do. They even went as far as costing people their jobs, giving them giving people an ultimatum, hey, either do this or you're gonna lose your job. And a lot of people had to make a hard decision either way, as you all know. Trying to rein in an economy in which cash still dominates, Nigeria is imposing limits on how much cash its people can withdraw per day from automatic teller machines, from ATMs. And in Nigeria, it's probably a lot like uh, other third world countries where they mostly deal in cash. Like for example, in India, a lot of the poorer people there, they're unbanked. They can't even afford a cell phone. So they deal mainly with cash. So I'm not sure if they're gonna, I haven't read this article yet. So I'm not sure if they're gonna talk here about the people that are unbanked, that can't even afford to have a cell phone. What are they going to do if it goes to a full digital cash system? They continue, in a letter sent to banks on Tuesday, the Central Bank of Nigeria said that as of January 9th, the daily limit of money that can be withdrawn per day is 20,000 Naira. According to Bloomberg, comes out to just shy of $45. And the current limit right now is 150000 So let's see, that's going to be five, two hundred and fifty, roughly 300 bucks or so is the limit right now, which is kind of like similar to what it is in Western nations. I know that here, one of my banks that I have a bank card for, the limit is $400 a day, which really, when you think about it, it's really not that much. And I have another one that has a little bit of a higher limit, but I almost never use that one because I, I don't want to get charged a fee. So they're bringing it down from 150000 to 20000 That is a lot, ladies and gentlemen. So what are these people going to do, the ones that deal with mainly in cash? The new edict limits weekly withdrawals of cash at no more than 100,000 Naira for people and 500 Naira for corporations. So you can't even take out 20,000 Naira 
uh, for every day of the week. You can only do it five days of the week. They're limiting you to 100,000 altogether for the entire week. So they're going from 150,000 per day right now to 100,000 for the entire week, no more than 20,000 per day. Other rules include a ban on cashing checks above 50,000 NIDA over the counter and getting more than 20,000 NIDA a day through cash withdrawals at point of sale terminals. They are covering all their tracks. And this is exactly what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen. They're trying to get the public used to not using that much cash, making it as much of a nuisance as they can for them to hold cash so that they will seamlessly enter into this digital currency that pretty much all central banks and governments want to transfer us over into. They say that customers should be encouraged to use alternative channels to conduct their banking transactions. The central bank said in this letter, how convenient. The central bank has been trying to wean Nigerians off of cash through a policy it calls cashless Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever country you live in, fiat currency is nothing but a piece of paper with ink on it that the government says you have to use, right? That you have to use. However, being able to transact in cash right now gives you more freedom than being able to transact in nothing but digital currencies. Think about it. Think about how easy it would be for them to shut you down. Remember all these channels and all of these, um, you know, YouTube, Twitter, I don't know the other social media things that are on, but remember all these people that were talking in a manner which governments didn't really like? And uh, now we know that governments were using some of these uh, companies that were social media companies in order to cancel these channels or these personalities from their sites and pretty much every site that's the same thing that can happen to you just imagine this imagine if we have a centrally banked digital currency and that's all we have what would you do if that's turned off what would you do if you have a whole bunch of money in the bank and it's turned off to where you can't use any of it you can't pay your electric bill you can't put gas in your vehicle. This is the power that the government will get if we go into a digital currency. It is the exact power that they would get, ladies and gentlemen. Please look into this. That way you know what's coming. We need to be prepared in order to resist. Bloomberg estimates that the policy has a long way to go, with about 85% of Nigeria's currency held outside of banks. Almost 40 million adults do not have banks. They are unbanked. The policy is linked to concerns over gangs that turn to kidnapping as a form of making money through ransom, according to Reuters. Other issues the bank has cited include counterfeiting, according to a report by the agency Free Press posted by Barons. Well, I mean, governments counterfeit money every single day. They print money out of thin air. Where do you think all of the excess money the deficits that government runs every year where do you think that money comes from they just print it out of thin air literally ladies and gentlemen they print it let me tell you real quick how it works the government needs money so they tell the central bank hey we need x amount of dollars the central bank doesn't print that and just give it to them no what happens is is the government goes out there and sells bonds you know either one month three month five month one one year you know etc they sell bonds in the market. Then when nobody wants to buy those bonds because they don't feel like making 3% or 4% interest in a time when inflation is at 8 9%, when nobody wants to buy those bonds, guess who buys the bonds? Banks do. Banks buy those bonds with your money, the money that you have deposited in them. And then in turn, the banks take those bonds, they give them to the Federal Reserve or sell them to the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve gives them that cash. It's a way to get around the system that they've been doing for years. So whenever you hear people say that, oh, the government prints money, that's exactly what they're doing. They're printing bonds that they then sell in the market and usually when nobody wants to buy them, the bank will buy them and then the bank will sell those bonds to the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve will print the money out of thin air and give it to the banks. That's what printing money out of thin air means. Another way of thinking of printing money out of thin air is go get a mortgage. 
if you go get a mortgage, let's say for example, $300,000, you're buying a house. When you sign that contract and the bank manager or the loan officer signs that contract, they have committed $300,000 to be created out of thin air to give to you so that you can buy that house. So that $300,000 that was loaned to you so that you can buy that house never existed before you took out that mortgage. That's another way of printing money out of thin air. It works the same way with any other types of credit, like with car loans, with credit card. Every time you swipe your credit card, you're creating money out of thin air. The report also linked the policy to an effort to limit buying of votes and other shady transactions as the nation approaches its presidential election in February. I'll leave the link to this article, ladies and gentlemen, so that you can go ahead and revisit it. But this is how it starts. These are the things that we have to look at in order to know what's coming here. Eventually, it will come here. Actually, I do believe that uh, the president said that by the middle of next year that we will have a digital currency. And they are testing it right now. Uh, I think they probably still have about eight weeks left of testing a digital currency through the Central Bank of New York. So it's coming and you have to prepare for this. It will happen. However, I believe that within a year or two after it happens or within a year or two after they actually get rid of cash here in the United States, that people will start to wake up and ask themselves, what in the world have we done? Why have we allowed this to happen? Because the tyranny... All right. The the taking away of our freedoms is going to hit people so hard, especially those that are not prepared, that they are going to get one of the most rude awakenings that they've ever gotten in their life. So prepare, ladies and gentlemen, that way you can resist, that way you can make it through the carnage of what is going to be most people in the United States of America, because people will ask for this. They do need another crisis, a major crisis. They need a put forth a major crisis so that most people in the United States will be even more in despair than they are now. Remember, right now, about 63 to 70% of the people in the United States live paycheck to paycheck. That next crisis is going to wipe them out. And remember that this year, about 40% of businesses that went out of business, they closed their doors forever. They're not coming back. So the other 50, 60% of businesses that are left, and I'm talking about mom and pop shops, middle class businesses, the 50, 60% that are left, when we get into the next crisis, major crisis, I believe it will be some type of a financial collapse, economic collapse, something like that. When we get into that next major crisis, that will be a great opportunity to wipe out the rest of those small businesses. And even more people will be in despair and they will ask, those that are not awake, they will ask, for this because the government will dangle that carrot in front of their face and say we will stop the pain if you only take this medicine and they're only going to offer one medicine and that's going to be a cbdc having said that i hope that you have a great day i do have one more video to put out later on today so check that video out because it also gives you a look ahead as to what will happen here in the u.s along with other nations that consider themselves first world nations. Having said that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining in. Thank you very much for those of you that went over to Sutton Day's channel and uh, donated to her food bank drive. They are doing awesome. It tells me that we here in the prepper community and homesteading community within YouTube that we do stick together and that we do love our countrymen. So I do appreciate you going over there and showing your support. And uh, for those of you that do not have the ability to donate because you just can't, there's nothing wrong with that. Send them your prayers and positive thoughts. You know why? Because those that can give, they're picking it up. We're doing it together and that's all that matters. God bless every one of you.